um, what happens to the soap uh, after it's made in the mold. This is the soap that we made uh, yesterday uh, in the mold and it is setting and getting hard. It's going to be six to eight weeks before things are really finished, but this one's not ready to take out of the mold yet. After about two or three days, I'm ready to take them out of the mold. So here's a soap that was made two or three days ago, and in the mold, to remove the mold, it's pretty quick and easy. Just undo the pegs on the wooden mold. Hold down the sides, and then the freezer paper that I used uh, to line the mold lets me take things out quickly and easily, and um, I'll take care of this later. Then what's kind of important this is like three days or four days after the soap has been made. To peel away the liner, which is going to stick all around to the sides of the soap and even on the bottom, to peel away the liner. Now the purpose of that is to get all of the soap exposed to the air so that it can dry and form a crust. Put the liner back on loosely. So that air can reach the soap all around, but not too much air. Keeping the label on so I remember which flavor this is. And then I'm going to turn this soap back to the shelf so it can have a few more days to cool and continue to harden and to um, get to, to dry out all around. This soap here has is now three or four days past that point and this should be ready for cutting. It's still pretty soft but it's pliable and it, and it can be cut. You may or may not notice but there's a little um, layer of foam that's being formed all over the soap. That's something that we're going to shave away later, but not now. For now, what we're going to do is cut this soap. To cut it, a really neat soap cutter. Got this off the um, internet. It's a little bit reminiscent of, uh, you may have seen cheese cutters that work on this principle. It's got a uh, guitar string wire here and like a guillotine effect so I can put the whole bar of soap on the cutter and then just slice very carefully you need a really fine wire to cut the soap without messing the soap up um, this thing has a thing uh, to, to slide and uh, a, a gauge to know how much soap I'm cutting each time. I've set the gauge so that I'm going to get bars of soap that are a little bit less than two inches across and that'll give me 11 bars of soap out of this. So to start it, I'm going to get the very edge of the soap and cut just a tiny slice off the front edge just so the front part will be straightened out and then just slide the, the soap across. Cutting. There's a bar. Okay, now you have 11 cut bars and some end pieces. Now with these cut bars of soap, they're still a long way from being ready to do anything more. I'm going to put them on this uh, drying rack. The drying and cooling rack um, has ventilation on all sides. And I space the bars of soap with just a little bit of air space in between them. Because this stuff now needs to do some serious cooling. Well, it's cool enough already. Uh, some serious hardening. Because it's still way too soft for me to do anything more with it other than to have cut it. I use the end pieces as my dividers. So 
so I can see which batch is separated from which. And I stick the label with the identification of the fragrance and the date that it was finished right there. And here's some soap that's, that's older soap. It is now about three weeks after our first video, earlier video, and the all the soap that I'm going to make is right here. It's all been cut. It's all had a little time to uh, dry and harden, and some of it is more hard than others, uh, the earlier stuff that was made. So uh, some of this is ready for uh, shaving and for smoothing. I will take... Uh, a bar of uh, this. This is a bar of spikenard. It's uh, the flavor um, of oil that uh, in biblical terms was reputed to be the kind of oil that Mary Magdalene rubbed on the feet of Jesus. So it's got some historical and maybe even Christmas significance. Uh, and if you put your finger over, rub your finger over it, you feel it's nice and square but it's rough and this little device here is a little blade that sticks up um, through uh, an opening and lets me slide the soap across it and the blade will just gently shave off a nice level spot on the soap so I just grab this soap push it across the blade on one side turn it over push it across the blade on the other side turn it Quarter return, get, get the edges, get the tips. And now that's one level of smoothing uh, across all the surfaces of the soap. Um, if the soap didn't feel perfectly smooth at that point, like this feels just like it's got a little bit more need, I can rub this side again. Takes just a tiny bit off the soap. It makes it oh so smooth. Um, I don't know if you can see the comparison between soap that's been shaved and soap that hasn't been shaved, but this is a lot tidier and it's beginning to shine, get a little shimmer to it. By the way, spikenard adds a color um, to the soap, uh, not just the bright yellow that you see for the unflavored soap, uh, and I kind of like that. It adds a little texture to it. Um, another one, flavor. Um, this is musk. Uh, adds even more color to the soap. And I don't stir this as much when it's in the mold so that I can leave it looking a little bit irregular because that keeps a nice little pattern going of color. And other than that, I don't add any color to any of these soaps. So this uh, bar of soap here, which has been shaved, uh, most of the foam part has been removed and it's got little color texture to it. Um, I could stop at this point, except the edges are sharp, and you wouldn't want to cut your finger on a bar of soap now, would you? I will, I've got this little tool here, um, which can rub across these edges and take away the sharpness. Do it across every edge, down the sides. And now it's smoother to the touch. Feels comfortable in the hand. And once again, I could stop at this point, but this uh, soap now still needs about two more weeks, maybe even three more weeks of drying and hardening before it's absolutely finished. And at that point, I could take a second look at it, and if it needs a little more shaving or a little more finishing up, there's still the opportunity to do that. And by the way, after I'd finished shaving this soap, you, I bet you wanted to know what was underneath the shaver. Well, all the shavings. It looks like we're wasting a lot of soap, and maybe we are. Um, I could chop that up and make laundry soap out of that, but that's for another day.